Well, good morning, Colleen. Hello, my friend. Oh, gosh. We've got a wonderful show today. It's so exciting to do this show with you. I feel like we've we've known each other for 112 years. At least you know, I think Yeah, I think we're soul sisters. I think at, so. At, at some end here. It's, it's like we can we could talk and talk on this subject forever. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought that maybe today we would talk about People that, uh, let me see, let me put up my banner here. You know, for instance, okay, my dog just died. And how do I express myself? Because the, the, the inside you're just hurting and you're feeling all this pain and you want people to really understand how you're feeling. Uh, and you want to put it on paper because people are finding that social media is a great way to help heal, especially if you belong to support groups mm -hmm. for pet loss. So these people that get on, they, they start to randomly write and then they edit it over and over and over, and they still don't feel as though they're getting out what they really want to say. Mm -hmm. So can we give them some guidelines as to how do you write about the loss of your dog, the pain that you have, where it can be cathargic to you? It's like writing a letter to your dog. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know I, I, one, of the, one of the things that I used to tell people, and I still do when I'm, when I'm with them and I'm walking with them, is first of all, just put it down on paper and maybe you treat it as a letter and maybe it's a letter either to the dog or it's a letter about the dog. Okay. I also give permission that grammar doesn't matter. Grammar and spelling doesn't matter because what I'd rather you do is just get it all on the piece of paper mm -hmm. and, and just put it down. Journaling is such a healing thing to do and it's an active part of the grief process because it's morning, it's doing yeah. something. And so I'm a huge proponent of journaling and having people just put their emotions down and put everything down on a piece of paper. And, and for those of us around that are offering support, we need to understand that, first of all, they're in grief brain. So things might not be clear. Emotions not, might not be clear. How you put it down on paper might not be clear because what's probably going to come out is anger and sadness and guilt and regret and 19,000 other things are going to come out because it's all, it's all you know how to do. And it's all you're trying to do is just to, to get it out, not make sense of it, just mm -hmm. get it out. And so for, for all of us, so let's go the other side. So for all of us that are reading these things, it, it's a couple of things. It's number one, understanding that they're just trying to, to put everything out and they're just trying to, to get things down on paper. And it's not for us to make sense of it. It's not for us to, to tell them why they shouldn't feel that way or why they should feel some way different or whatever the case may be. For us, it's to, to give support and to give permission. I, I got a text last night from somebody who was grieving and I, and I merely said to them, cry all you want, permission to cry. Because I think too many times we try to tell them not to cry because it's either, you know, they shouldn't feel that way, so they shouldn't be sad, so they shouldn't cry, or heaven forbid we ever we ever say to a child, you know, big boys don't cry or big girls don't cry. That's just ridiculous, it's nonsense. So for us, it's to, to give them the permission and, and not to say, I know how you feel because I've lost a dog too, that's not, I don't know how you feel. I know how I felt when my dog died, Yeah, but it's, but it's not, I can't even remotely understand how you feel because it's yeah. real. Yeah, that's actually the, the next question that we had because we've got a number of questions that came from some of our fans. And this one was, you know, how do I respond to someone on social media about the loss of their dog? Because most of them is the same thing. You see either a broken heart or you see uh, some type of a rainbow bridge, Jiffy or mm -hmm. a, a GIF or, or um, picture that they have. Uh, sorry for your loss. Sorry for your loss. What I've heard from some of the people that I know that have lost their pets, they've said when there's a profound statement that someone makes after they've shared their heart out, 
it makes them feel closer to that person that that person really understood where they were coming from. Just like you said, for instance, um, I don't know how you feel, but I know how I felt mm -hmm. when my dog passed away. And I can only tell you that you have to grieve. You have to go through your own grieving process. You have to, well, you don't have to do anything, but if you if you allow yourself to just go ahead and grieve and cry and carry on there are no limits right to to um your grieving process especially when you have somebody that will write a comment by the way anybody that writes a comment that says it's just a dog get over it immediately unfriend, <laughs> oh, right unfriend immediately <laughs> Oh my gosh. And then block them and ban them and do everything you can. To. Well, you know what, though? The fans, whoever is responding, and if they're in a support group, they will come all over them like stink oh, gun poop right. anyway. They yeah. right. Exactly yeah. right. Yep. So, so, okay, again, too. How do they respond to someone's post? So if a, if they put a broken heart or a sad face emoji or whatever it may be, Number one, maybe that's all they, maybe that's all they can say. Maybe that's all they know how to say. Maybe that's, maybe that's the most comforting for them because they don't know what else to say. And for that, thank you. Thank yeah. you for doing that because I would rather you do that than overcompensate and say something that it might be frustrating to the to the person or might be offensive what it, whatever it may be and i always like to believe in the best in people i really do and give them the benefit of the doubt to say they really do try to do the best thing um but but think about saying you know if you knew the person now you may be like me i i comment on everything i i see when it comes to the loss of an animal even if i don't know the person nor the animal and so i still will comment and and when i do those it's you know, gosh, huge, huge hugs and so sorry because I didn't know either one of them, but I want them to feel the support even if it's virtually, right? But yeah. if you do if you do know the person and you do in and, and or you do know the animal, then then say this. If I don't know the animal, say I I you know what, Betsy, here's what I remember. I remember you talking uh, and, and telling the story so many times about how Buddy did this or how Buddy did that or Buddy was so wandering when he did this. And so when I close my eyes and I think about Buddy, this is what I'm going to remember for you. And my heart breaks because no longer will you see Buddy do that thing that you shared with me. But thank you for sharing that with me because that's what I want to remember. If, if, I, knew the, if I knew the animal then what I would say, let me tell you what I remember when I would come to your house. Buddy was always so funny. He always brought me a toy. And, yeah. you know, it was like a little peace symbol. And and we had our little game we played. And and gosh, I'm sure going to miss when I come to your home that Buddy won't bring me a toy. And I'm so more of a that. celebration of the wonderful things that the dog brought to your life. Well, wonderful. Yeah. Or, or somebody that share, shared, I'm sure most, bleh, most people that are sharing about their dogs and then it comes to the rainbow bridge side they probably had 50 or 60 or 100 photos that they've already shared on social media yeah. about the, about their dogs so you get to know someone's yes. dogs if you're in a group yes for you sure. feel like you know them already absolutely yeah so and so it, the sharing is more of a sharing of a personal story, mm -hmm. but not, not necessarily because that puts a personal touch to the condolence message, not necessarily celebrating the life, but it per puts a personal touch to the to the story versus saying, you know, gosh, I'm going to miss Buddy too. But when you go on and add, I'm going to miss when he brings a toy to me every time I came to your front yeah. door, that gives it that personal touch and that personal feel and that personal message. And, and it, and it adds that element to it. Just like when you write a sympathy card. All right. That is such a lost art now because we do it either via text or via a, a, a you know, a internet message or whatever it may be. And, and I, I tell you what, I, I have a personal rule that I send three personal cards every week. To people and especially sympathy cards. I'm huge on sympathy cards. Mm -hmm. Send a card. And those cards are actually direct mail cards and letters, personal letters. Those are actually becoming cool again. I don't know if you know that. 
yeah cool again the uh, the millennials love love getting direct getting mail and so send them send a piece and every time i send a card i make sure i put something personal in the card whether about the person or about the about the the pet put a personal note to it add yeah. something personal give it a personal touch that's what we love to hear but if you don't know what else to say putting a broken heart or a rainbow emoji or whatever it is as a grieving heart say thank you Thank you for caring yeah. enough to take the time to even put a broken heart emoji. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I do know that the the people that are empathetic and compassionate and all dog lovers really are, uh, they you're right. They don't know what to say. We have a, a, a comment here. I want to talk about me. I want to talk about Mimi's comment. So yeah, you can't defriend your mom. Um, bless her heart. So you can't defriend your mom, but here's what we can do. Cause I've, I've had this exact statement right here too many times to count. And, and whether it's mom or dad or brother or friend or whatever it is, just somebody within the social circle that, that says that. And so what I tell people, I give them permission. I say for a little bit, let's just not tell mom about our broken heart. And let's just find those that are going to be of healthy support. And when you are a little stronger and when you feel um, a little more up to it, then we can, uh, what, I, what I always said, I'll, I'll give you the exact thing I say. I would tell people, let's put mom in a box and put mom on the shelf for a little bit because mom maybe isn't helping us in our grief journey. And so let's do that. And then when we're strong enough and ready, we can get mom down off the shelf and mom can come back in our world. <laughs> <laughs> That's very, very good. Very and I good. got my mom sitting right here. So. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, you know, that's, you can take any word with mom and Mimi's statement there. And like I said, it's, it happens all the time in social circles because you're going to have a, a group of your folks that, that are in your world that don't get the relationship you had. And that's all right. It's okay. We don't get them either. <laughs> Let's face it. Yeah. I don't get you either. So, but it's not a time for us to try to help them understand the human animal bond. They don't get it. And it is what it is. Right. So I was figuring that for our shows in the future, we'll start off today, that we'll pick some from the Rainbow Bridge groups and some people that are really having a difficult time and, and we'll honor them and we'll showcase them. And today, so to, today I've, I've chosen Savannah. I just became a friend of hers and she was on Rainbow Bridge and she's just having a very, very difficult time. Uh, uh, let you read that. Anyway, she, it was very difficult difficult for her and she decided to do a celebration of life with her dog and here's her dog oh this, this, yeah that's just so sweet and she's having a difficult time so we want to honor you and can we give her some words of 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 uh, strength and courage so the words i would give her is cry all those tears and when you think you're done cry again and when you want to be mad be mad and when you want to be sad, be sad. And when you want to be okay, be okay. Um, because there's going to be all of those things. And and don't, you know, right now I can I can probably say that she's got this fight going on between her heart and her head. And her head is probably saying, come on, you know, you need to get yourself together. You need to pull it together. You've got to be strong. I think I saw a baby seat in the in the back of that background of that picture. You've, you know, we've got things to take care of and business to take care of and life to take care of. So get your, get your you know, get your strength back up. And I'm going to tell her, forget all that stuff. You know, you you had this life touched and you were touched by this dog. And so give yourself permission to just feel for a little bit and and let it let it be. Let it be what it is. Don't fight it. Don't get talked out of it. Don't talk yourself out of it. Just just do what you need to do to honor that precious little love and the life you shared and, and continue. Here's the other thing I would tell her. Animals, and we talked about this, I think, two shows ago, Kathy. Animals make us routine. And so whatever your routines are with that, with that doggy, the routines you want to remember, okay? I, I got to share a funny story with you. My, my little Yorkie Chihuahua was a bad little boy. He was just a bad little boy. He was a <laughs> little stinker, boy. huh? little oh, stinker. And that's a nice word for him because <laughs> he's been called many other things other than stinker. 
and he was eight pounds of just bad little boy. And he got mad when I got the cat. It was a male cat. And he was, you know, obviously a little male Yorkie Chihuahua. And he decided he wanted to mark everything in the house a gazillion times. And so he's been in a belly band with a maxi pad for probably eight years. And so every time he came in from outside, he literally stood there and waited for you to put the belly band on, which had a maxi pad in it. <laughs> and, um, you know, so the other day I'm walking through the store, walk by the maxi pad section and literally stopped and shed a few tears. I'm like, do you know how long it's been since we bought maxi pads for God's sake? So I had a little cry in the store over maxi pads. So she's going to be going through that same thing yeah. with, with all these routines and things that are going to be, you know, rip at your heart because she's not getting up in the morning to feed the dog. And, it, and if that little precious love was on some medicines, there's, you know, he's not on medicines and I don't have to go through that routine. Some of that might be bad memories that you're okay to forget and you're okay to not do anymore. But I would also tell her, continue on with the routines and do what you need to do until you're ready to say, today we're going to start a different routine. Mm -hmm. okay. Permission to do all that. Yeah. Hi, Steve. Hi, Sebastian. Sebastian's here, too. He's my my bonus son. <laughs> oh, awesome. Hi, Sebastian. <laughs> okay, but the, the next area that I think I told you that for the first time on the Dog Connection show yesterday, we did one, and we, we talked about the dogs that are connected from a spiritual standpoint. Mm -hmm. So what I'm finding, and I know for sure you are, too, that when we look at our dogs and it's coming towards the end, there's a certain amount of connection that we get from the heart level where we can communicate with them and we don't know where that's coming from. The truth is we can do that long before mm -hmm. they're getting ill and they're passing away, but we don't really know how to. And I know that from an animal communication standpoint, looking at that end of life for the dog and when they're connecting with them, I think it's because people are finally settling down and they're taking the time to be with their animals more so than they ever had before. The dog may have been there, but at the end, I don't want to go to work. I don't want to eat. I don't want to be with the family. I don't want to be with friends. I want to be with my dog. I want to spend time. And that's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be nice if they could feel that way all the time? You know, I think I think they do. And I'm going to give you a for instance. Okay. You know, if you're if you kind of stop yourself and you become mindful of the communication that you have with an animal and, you know, I can I can sit on the couch. I can have a magazine that I'm reading and, you know, I, I again, I got my mom sitting right here and and she's sitting in the other cat in the other chair. And all of a sudden I say, move your feet. And she's like, why? And I said, because Ellie needs to get through there. Well, how do you know that? And I said, I just know that Ellie. And sure enough, Ellie needs through there. So I think that we we organically communicate with them already. And if you stop yourself for a second, when those sorts of things and intuitions, whatever you want to call it, when those sorts of things start to happen and you're like, why, why did I know that Ellie wanted through there? Or why did I know that? I needed to move that pillow or why did I know that they needed this or that or the other thing? And you, you kind of stop for a minute and, and you're mindful of it. And sometimes question the answer is just because, and sometimes I just know them well enough on how their energy is and their bodies are moving of what they need. So it's already happening. I just think at the end it gets more elevated and we're probably you know, I'm going to give you a visual that you almost kind of you just close your eyes and you and you close them so tight because you you want to be more mindful and you want to hear them more. And I think a lot of times we do that because we want them to tell us it's OK. We want yeah. them to tell us that they're ready. And, and I so was just you took hard. the words out of my mouth. I already had that prepared. I was going to say now when the when it's when it's getting time, then you, when you're looking your dog in the eyes and then all of a sudden you just know, you know, it's time and they haven't left you. They've just gone ahead. They'll always be with you in your heart. Just look at your mm -hmm. side and they'll always be there. You know, and yeah, I, so they I, tell I, us, they tell I, us, don't they? Sometimes, sometimes. And I got to tell you, I had a veterinarian one day in one of my pet loss support groups 
And when it came to her for some, some really interesting sharing, one of the things she shared was, I will never again say to a family, they will tell you when they're ready. Because oh, okay. she said, mine did not, or I don't think he did. And she said, and I just finally had to make the call because it got, it got so bad. And so she said, never again will I say that to a family because mine didn't tell me. And she said, I, I, some do and some don't. So I think for everybody listening here, don't put the pressure on yourself to think that they will tell you because the guilt that you'll feel after, which says I went ahead and made the call and I never got the message from them, then it then it compounds that, right? Yeah. And so yeah. what I what I say is instead of that, and and Kathy, I, I can't remember if we put this up already. There's some beautiful quality of life scales out there that a couple of my colleagues have. And what I would rather you do is, is do subjective and objective when you're looking at the decision of making the time. Now, let's also remember that it's okay to tell your veterinarian what I would rather do is, that's a beautiful question. What I would rather do is I would rather get him to a natural death and, and not have to make the call and that's fine too, but you also need to understand what the disease progression is going to look like for your particular animal. Okay, right. so go into the this same thing. as the human. Same as the human. As a human, you don't want to exactly. see you love and pain, and that's why nope. they have uh, your um, uh, DNA and, and your your last will, your last right. Yep. yep, exactly. And so when you do a quality of life scale, and not only do you look at at the quality of life for the animal and what's going on with them. But you look at it from some health perspectives. Is he eaten? How did he do today? How was he moving around? But you also look at it on, did I feel like today was a good day for him because he still barked at the UPS guy or yeah, yeah. are we not barking at the UPS guy anymore? And I, and I've actually had some families tell me the day he stops barking at the UPS guy is probably going to make the, be the day. And then they've called me and, and comes out that today he didn't bark at the UPS guy. And I said, so are we ready? And she said, nope, I think I'm going to do the day he doesn't bark at the birds in the window. And so <laughs> yeah, yeah. who cares? Permission to move the line. That's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Move the yeah. line. Yeah, Doesn't there's that, that thing where you make that final decision, and if you don't follow through, you feel, oh, I'm, I missed it, and what are people going to think? It doesn't make any difference what somebody thinks. No, it's 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 where you are at. Right. Same thing for people telling you about get over it, he's just a dog, or get over it, um, right. they're in a better place and all that. Well, you're not. Right, exactly. You're not. So some of those, just like Mimi's comments, some of them we just – we got to just put them away for a little bit because we can't, we can't listen to them because it's not good for us. Mm -hmm. So it is what it is. Yeah. 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 So actually I did a pedigraph before and this particular pedigraph was, oh, I love that. A, yeah. And, and this was actually about the two of them are now together in rainbow bridge. Uh -huh. And th this is where the dog actually did tell this guy that it was time. It's time. Yeah. It was time. Yeah. Uh, it was funny because the guy, was, the man was, was ill as well. And he passed away shortly after the dog did Gosh. because the bond was so strong yeah. that I guess the dog was feeling really bad about leaving him. And the guy was saying, that's okay. I'll be there right, right <laughs> real soon after you. <laughs> yeah. Yep, I love that. Kathy, I want you to put, and I know you're running a couple of screens there. There's a beautiful video that I always use in my teaching, and it's okay. the uh, video is Denali, D E N A L I, Denali. And if, if for if when you're on here and if you click on this link, um, I want you to make sure you got not one, not two, but probably a whole thing of Kleenexes. But it is such a beautiful tribute to this dog by his daddy and just the connection that they had and the relationship that they shared and the way that they shared it. It's just, it's the most touching 
touching video. One of the most touching. There's a there's a handful, and I'm going to sprinkle them in throughout our shows. So I'm not going to going to give them all to you. So we'll you'll have to wait, and uh, I'll give those to you as we as we go through our next episodes. But Denali, it's just such a beautiful. Oh, Denali dog. Okay, Denali dog, and it's probably a beach scene with a with a truck. I can't think with the. Uh, uh, okay, Denali, a tribute to a man's best friend. There you go. That's probably it. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna whoop. Stop it. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, hang on here a second. I'm gonna get a nice little ad there. Oh yeah, I see it. You've got the right one. Okay. Yeah, that's the one. I overheard someone talking about their problems the other day. I had the worst day ever, they said. First, there was nowhere to park at Whole Foods and everyone was acting all aggro, so I had to walk like two blocks in the rain and my shoes got soaked. Then my stupid salad was like $12. Then I was in such a rush to get the yoga, I forgot my mat. I had to use some nasty loner mat and it smelled like balls. I don't know what the big deal is. I love the way balls smell. I'm pretty sure Ben knows I'm dying. I'm not sure if it's the cancer or something else, but he's been taking me to all the places we used to go to and checking on me a lot. The other day he asked me to let him know when I was ready to go. He said he didn't want me to suffer. Growing up with Ben was pretty great. He made pictures for a living and didn't feel as comfortable in the city, so we traveled around a lot. He's what his hippie friends call a free spirit or something. We camped a lot. I'd pretend I was a giant stinky butterfly. I'd help Ben find girlfriends. We'd go shark fishing. We'd do yoga. I'd give him kisses. We'd hang out with famous people. We even went sailing in the desert once. Which brings me to a time in my life that I've always been a little self-conscious about. Of course, it's not my fault, but I became so handsome that it was impossible to ignore. When Ben started to notice, I had to start working for a living. Humiliating outfits became pretty standard. If you've ever been told to look cute, you know it's not as easy as it sounds. And you can't just fake special kisses in the studio. It won't look authentic. Oh man, those were the good old days for sure. I think most people would have left their old dog at home, but Ben insisted on taking me to all our favorite spots one more time. I think he feels like he can't leave my side right now. This one time, about 10 years ago, we were camping at Joshua Tree, and Ben stood up by the campfire and just passed out, and he started bleeding. Things changed a lot after that. When I licked him, I could taste the chemicals they were putting in him to kill the cancer, but it just seemed like they were killing him too.
If anyone had tried to take me out of that hospital room, I would have bitten their face. I remember feeling really sad for Ben when he found out he'd have to poop into a plastic bag attached to his stomach for the rest of his life. Mainly because he already had to put all of my poop into plastic bags. The worst, though, was when this letter came from the insurance company. One time I had the best dream ever. I dreamed I had rabies and snuck into the insurance company to share my rabies with as many people as I could before they shot me with a tranquilizer gun. I don't know what I would have done without Ben. I'm so glad his cancer went away. I'd be so scared right now if I was going through this without him. I've been trying to be really strong for him this week, just like he was when things were going really bad. My last night was really peaceful. I wasn't hungry anymore, so I let Ben know it was time, and he let me sleep on his chest all night. Oh, gosh. Ben said a raven swooped by while he carried me to the vet's car in the morning. I'm sure his hippie friends had lots to say about that. There was this really smart scientist guy who thought that people could learn a lot from dogs. He said that when someone you love walks through the door, even if it happens five times a day, you should go totally insane with joy. Oh my gosh. I should have warned you. Sorry. Well, I kind of warned you. Oh, cool. I, I still hit my mic on it and I was crying. <laughs> oh my God. Was anybody else crying out there watching that? Oh I would love to know that. Jeez. Oh my God. What prompted you to want to share that at this moment? It was well, like perfect I, timing. I, it, I think it was too. I, it's just one that I use in all my teaching because I think it's just such a, a beautiful representation of a life shared of lessons from a life. The very final comment oh that he made, yeah. it, you know, and how he knew it was time and all that. It just, there was so many aspects of that. And the other reason I wanted to share it is because you know, I just I love what people do to to show and to pull together and to honor the life they share with their Denali, whoever their Denali is. And so this is what he did. I've got more that will that we'll talk oh, about gosh, over the next few geez. episodes. Yeah. yeah. But isn't that just a beautiful and I think for all of us on here too, yeah, I knew Mimi would. For all of us on here too, it helps normalize and say, guess what? There are some amazing things that our tribe, our people, everybody who's on this show, that there's there's so many beautiful things that we're doing. And at the end of the day, for for the Mimi's moms of the world, they they don't they don't get it but that's all right it's okay cuz we don't understand not loving an animal and and that's okay we don't get them and they don't get us it's okay it's okay we just need I to agree to disagree crying. i can't stop crying i'm i'm sitting here and i'm trying oh my god I'm, just... trying to keep <laughs> I'm trying to keep talking so you can yeah yeah it's it's um 
you know what it is, Colleen? For so long with the dog connection, we always wanted to add that spiritual component. When you think of it, all your life that you have a dog in your life and you share with them and all the, the things that they bring to you and that you bring to them as well. But you're right, a life shared mm -hmm. with your dog shared pain in one area and pain in another area, laughter, love, all of the wonderful emotions. That's unconditional love. That is yeah. the true definition of unconditional love between human and, and dog. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, when you, when you look at, I, again, I can't tell you the, the sure, you thousands. Can. I can, <laughs> I can tell you the thousand, I, I don't have an exact number the thousands of times people have said to me, but my dog was the only one who saw me through the cancer journey or through the, the divorce or through the, this or through the, that. And it was this, this, you know, consistency of, of that support, that unconditional love. And so when the day comes that that support and that, and that comfort of that animal isn't there anymore, those are the things that says how, how will I get through that? Because yeah, it's yeah. happening again. You know, I'm, yeah. I, I have another illness I'm getting through or whatever it may be. And and I don't have that particular, you know, I don't have big Harry there to, to see me through that stuff. How will I get through it this time? Yeah. And so it brings up everything again. And it's and it's okay. It's it's absolutely okay. Yeah. And that's the, the thing to have a being in your, I'm sorry, to have a being in your life that not only is giving unconditional love, but is totally non-judgmental. Zero. 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 Mm -hmm. So you don't have that in your everyday life. So yeah. that even became more special. You're absolutely right. So then when they're gone, it's who can I talk to now? Yeah. Yeah. Who can and you I know share what? everything with? Exactly. And you know what? I You and I talked about this before we came on live this morning. You know, when, when we think about whether it's supporting somebody in a grief journey or we think about any anything else, these these kind of lessons we learn from animals, I call them AQ, animal quotient. You know, we know what EQ is, you know, emotional quotient. We know what IQ is, intelligent quotient. And, and so AQ. So what I always try to tell myself when I'm in situations is, what is the AQ? What is the the animal quotient? What it, if I were to channel an animal right now into this particular situation? What would they do? And I and I love channeling animals when it's just being, or it's unconditional love, or it's no judgment, or it's forgiveness. I, I love that. And yeah. when you when you take a look at so many of our households, I got two dogs and a cat. You know, they're they're different species. They respect each other's species. They received no judge for it. They respect how they are. They respect how their their um, you know their behavior and their personalities. No judging. It, it just imagine our world. Imagine our world, especially now, if every one of us could channel our animal and to say, "Listen, I'm okay that you're different. I'm okay with that. I respect it. I'm not going to yell about it." It's okay to agree to disagree. I'm okay mm -hmm. with that too. Doesn't mean I'm not going to do anything different as far as how I love you or it, it, I'm not going to hold a grudge with you heretofore because you behaved, you know, or you didn't agree with me in what I said. Mm -hmm. I mean, channel your animal, you know, and I tell people a lot when, when they're, you know, struggling in their grief journey, I say, if you were, if you were Buddy and, and Buddy was sitting here right now with you, how do you, what do you think Buddy would be doing? Well, he'd yeah. just be sitting here. He'd be, you know, let me pet him. He'd lick my cheek. You know, think about those things. Channel your animal. For God's sake, channel yeah. your animal. Beautiful lessons they could teach us. Beautiful. Oh, my gosh. We would just oh, pay attention yeah. to them. Yeah, yeah, that, that actually was a show we did yesterday was about lessons that that dogs spiritually bring to people and unconditional love was one of them. Mm -hmm. yeah, and of course, loyalty was the other a, a big area too. But For unconditional sure. love is, they give that to us all their life. And I guess what I'm getting at today more than anything, and now I realize it, is it would just be wonderful if when you first get a dog that you learn how to connect 
with that dog, not only getting them to do things, but at the heart level. Open your heart so that theirs can be open and that the two of you can connect just like in Denali. Yeah, exactly. But you know, yep. that's, that's another one that I think even, you know, at the end where we close our eyes and we really try to force things to happen, you know, I, I, my two new dogs that I have in my house now, I, instead of forcing that communication, I just, I, I, I watch them, I let them watch me, and then organically we figured out how we were going to communicate right. with each other versus forcing it. You know, yeah. so those are the things I think we try to control too much of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's like, let that, let that crap go. Stop trying to control it. Yeah. I, I guess I'm talking about heightened uh, awareness. Yep, totally agree. Because and and come to a higher level of your your uh, connection and your responsibility mm -hmm. to that dog because your responsibility is to contribute to their well-being yeah on a daily yeah. basis and yeah. one of the ways of contributing is to getting to know them yeah and you know the other thing too that i with our animals i think too often they are uh, they're intuitive and organic and if we would just watch that instead of letting instead of trying to control it and here's my story so my big harry was um, a, a big boy i took off the streets he was a, a flat coated retriever and i took him off the streets he was running and I, because I knew I just felt this connection with him when I saw him running and I just felt this connection with him. And I, not only a connection with him, but I knew he was going to be a perfect therapy dog, a grief therapy dog. I just, I just felt it. And so went to some pretty extreme measures to get him into my house and, and work, start working with him and got him to a point he was in his temporary vest and he was so beautiful when he would go into my pet funeral homes and just he just knew who he needed to be with and so we're at a, at a conference one time and um he, he had done a, a great job for two days of staying by my side and you know he we may have a subject and somebody might tear up and i would feel him just slip away and all of a sudden he would be over by katie or over by um, Mandy or whomever. And, and I would just, he would just know that. Well, so the last day, the very last presentation was two veterinarians and, 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 and they got up in front of the room and big Harry left my side immediately and went to the front of the room, which he had not done for two days, went to the front of the room to set by Dr. Melinda. And she petted him for a little bit. And I kept standing back there and calling him, you know, and being pretty insistent with stomping my foot and doing all the things. We yeah. Did, right? <laughs> yeah. And, um, finally, Dr. Melinda called me off and she was like, no, he's fine. Well, Dr. Melinda got down on the ground and finished her presentation. And so afterwards she came up to me and I said, Dr. Melinda, I'm so sorry. I said, he was so good for two days and I'm so sorry. And she said, no, she said he was exactly what I needed. We put our kitty cat to sleep right before we came here. And, and he knew that he just yeah. knew that's where he needed to be. Yeah. And so that the lesson for me on that one was listen to him, listen to him because he's, he's, he's hearing something. I .e. And feel feeling like and feeling the chemicals the changes yes. in her body, yeah. totally. all of that. Totally the, his it. sense, his senses were there. Yep. Again, I proof, stopped hiding it. Proof again that dogs are spiritual beings. Exactly. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I wanted to, uh, for the end here, I wanted to share uh, your website because for those of you that don't know, Colleen is she's got such a great background and she's got a beautiful, beautiful website. I love this picture that she has. We are all one creating memories and sharing life. And Colleen, could you share that some of in the educational portion, some of the things that you'll be able to provide for people if they are, we'll put a link. Actually, there is a link in the description anyway about her and how to get a hold of her on Instagram and on um, Twitter uh -huh. and then her, her webpage. Yep, but and linked, I'm on LinkedIn and, and Facebook as well. So reach out to me. One of the one of the things I learned uh, when I opened that first pet funeral home 17 years ago is that there was a lack of education, whether within the veterinary industry, and I've got a lot of social workers, end of life facilities, hospice workers, um, ministers, rabbis. I I've had every walk 
of the profession that have come through my classes. And it's, it's because they want to know more about how to support grieving pet parents and what they can do to help them in their, in their final journey. And so the, the site you just had up, Kathy, was some of the classes that I that I am teaching and what their objectives are. And in fact, on that particular website, if Kathy were to click on the education tab and the and the uh, first link under there is online education. And I thank you for going there, Kathy, because I want to show you this conducting a virtual memorial ceremony for a pet. Beautiful. There's three. There's two downloads in there. And then I, I actually walk you through a presentation on how to do a virtual memorial ceremony and the things you can do. The making law, pet loss a peaceful experience during the, the coronavirus pandemic beautiful things that pet parents can do as they face that end. And I love the, the Facebook posts that you shared, but there's so many other things that I put in there that, that you can do. You can create a, a, a playlist and I've put pictures in there to show you how to still be connected. Even if you've got a veterinarian that is requiring social distancing and curbside drop off and all those sorts of things, there's tons of ideas in there on things that you can still do to stay connected. And here's the big thing, and I and I and I get close to the screen, and I get my finger up because I I want you to know this stuff, and I want you to be a resource <laughs> for everybody on here. I want you to be a resource to anybody that's getting ready to say goodbye to a precious love right now. That animal is your animal. They are your animal. You have rights to ask questions. You have rights to ask for things. You have rights to take that animal home after that animal has passed away. You have rights to keep that animal at home after they've passed away. If your euthanasia was at home or if they died at home, keep them home. You have rights to take them to whatever end of life facility for cremation or burial that you want. You have rights if you want to do cremation. You have a right to witness that cremation. You have a right to ask that crematory for, for, for things and for tours and to see how they're going to conduct business and how they're going to take care of your precious baby. You have all of those rights. And if, and if none of that stuff on that site that Kathy just shared with you, it is things that are, that are, you know, things that you want right now. But what you do want is you want somebody to tell you the questions to ask, to tell you the things that you can ask for, and to guide you on the things you should look for. Email me, email me, text me, send me an Instagram message, whatever it is. I don't care. Message me because the last thing that I want to have happen is for anybody listening here or your extended circle. The last thing that I want to have happen is that you have a regret because you didn't ask a question or maybe something happened that you didn't want to have happen and you didn't reach out and coulda, shoulda, woulda, a coulda, shoulda, woulda. And those are awful. Those are awful. We don't ever want coulda, shoulda, woulda. Yeah. Well, you know, that's always the, at the end because you, you feel, well, there you don't want that pain. But then, well, maybe I could have done this or I could have done that. And when, when you think about it in the long run, yeah, you do have so many options. Euthanasia just isn't the only option. No, no. Nope. And just even so many. If euthanasia is an option. And it, and it, but it's still just a part of the process. Okay. Because even with euthanasia, you can still take the baby home. You can still have your own visitation and service at home. You can still do that. And I'm going to pound my fist until the day I leave this earthly existence that yeah. that's the thing that you should do. Yeah. Because it gives you the opportunity yeah. to slow yeah. the roll for a little bit and to be able to say goodbye, yeah. to have a toast, to drink wine, to light a candle. I don't care. It gives you the opportunity to yeah. do that. Well, you know, it's a funny thing. I, I know we're closing the show now, but I do, do want to say that it's a funny thing that so many people don't prepare for even their the humans in their lives for right. for the end of life. And I found myself in a position, especially with my husband passing away, we had to sit and we had to talk these serious discussions about yeah. what was going to happen yeah. when he was gone, you know, or, or, or when he was dying. How would how would we do this? Yeah. Well, the same thing holds true for, for our dogs. We know that at some point they're going to die before we do, unless, of course, it's unusual circumstances. And we, we, we just don't we don't choose to prepare. We yeah. really should prepare. Yeah. And, and, and have that. Is there is there things available to help oh. people prepare? 
I, oh my gosh, that's my entire, this has been my entire career. Is okay, helping great. People yeah, I know. I'm being final. facetious. <laughs> I know, you know, I, and I love the discussion. In fact, in the funeral business, hashtag do death differently is a really big movement out there. And, and there's, there's. In, what is in it? Every, Hashtags what? Do death differently. So that's oh, one. Do death differently. And so that's a big movement. Another big thing that's going on in all of the markets that I want you to put out here in the in the thing, the other thing that's going on are, are discussions and the discussions are titled, have a talk of a lifetime. Have a talk okay. of a lifetime. The next thing that's a big movement out there are these things called death care cafes. So people are getting together at death care cafes and they're having a talk of a lifetime. I have to tell you a funny thing about one of my colleagues. So I have a colleague, her name is Gail Rubin and she is, she's a death doula and she is, she is an amazing woman, but the, the tagline for her business is talking about funerals won't make you dead. Just like talking about sex won't make you pregnant. <laughs> is that funny? Funnier, yeah, yeah I it is, that. yeah. But it's so true. I used to, in fact, when I would when I would talk with families about pre planning their final event, one of the questions I would ask them is, if you were getting ready to go on a vacation, and before you left for vacation, you got a notice in your mailbox that the the fire insurance aspect for your home had been canceled. Would would you would you go down and put that into place before you took off for a vacation? Yeah, yeah. But let yeah. me. It's a one in 80,000 chance that your house is going to catch on fire and for us to die is one to one. Yeah. So exactly. who, what are you taking care of? What are your arrangements? What yeah. are you going to do for you, for your, for your, for your pets? And, and by the way, and we should probably make this a discussion, Kathy, there is, I've got an attorney friend, Peggy Hoyt, and she uh, is very active with pet trusts. Just like for us, we have trusts set up for all of our animals, which has money set aside for their care. And it also has a paper that goes with it, which says the level of care that we want. Okay. Mm -hmm. So pet trusts are set up. The average pet trust right now is $25,000. People are setting aside minimum average, sorry, $25,000 to take care of their pets. Should something happen to, to me and my husband and the pets need to be taken care of, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the, the pet trust goes into your will. Okay. Okay. Well, I want you to think about this when you, and you know this because of your husband, when you die and the will being read, there's, there's lag time, right? It, yeah. it doesn't happen at the same time. So you actually need another document that bridges that gap between the death and when the will is read, which has the pet trust in it. And so she's got the bridging document that ah, also okay interesting love. so i think we need to make that a discussion one day about how yeah we let's do, do that on next week's show Absolutely, we can and then we'll put the guide to planning ahead out there okay. as well as the list so we can okay. kind of do that whole full care you know planning ahead aspect okay what a great show what a great show so the last thing we want is to let everybody know that you will always be connected with your dog at the heart. And what a great show we had today. And, you know, it's funny, folks, because you would think that we were scripting this. We're not. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is totally off the cuff. So I want to thank you, Colleen. What a great host you are. Thanks, thank Kathy. you, sis. I feel like you're my soul sister. I know. I know. I think so, too. Thank you. And everybody on here. Yeah, so thank you. Please know to reach out to me at any time if you need anything. I'm here to walk with you. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.